Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden seeing you here today, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And check this out. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I pray that you're enjoying the Christmas season. Yes, it's Christmas time of the year where we as born again believers celebrate the birth of Christ. My God, the greatest thing that ever happened where the Lord chose a virgin named Mary and implanted in her. Oh my Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh, I thank God. I thank God that, that God would love us so much to give his Son to humanity, to come through a virgin and to be born. Yes, be born of a virgin. Wouldn't do you believe that? I believe it like I believe, uh, like I know my name 100%. I believe this book. I believe everything that's in it. I am a proud Christian, and I believe that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe that he lived a sinless life. I believe that he died on the cross and rose again the third day. He ascended back to heaven, and guess what? He's coming again, and the blessed hope of his return is what gives me joy like nothing else on the face of this earth. I look forward to the coming the return of my Lord and Savior. But until he returns, I want to join the angels. I want to do what they did the night that our Lord was born. The Bible says uh, suddenly the heavens were filled with a heavenly host of angels and they were singing peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Listen, I pray that you are enjoying this time of the year. I was asked a question by a very wise man. He's asked me, he says, hey, have you ever seen a Hanukkah tree? I told him, no. He said, have you ever seen a Kwanzaa tree? I said, no, sir. Then he said, uh, he said, you notice when they reference the Christmas tree, now they call it a holiday tree. Well, what holiday are you talking about? A Hanukkah doesn't have a tree. Uh, Kwanzaa doesn't have a tree. No, uh, the tree originally, originally called the Chrisman tree, which was to be decorated with decorations that tell the story of the birth of Jesus Christ and what took place in the Virgin Mary and Joseph and all of that. Yes, that's a part of this celebration as we celebrate Jesus. And you marketers out there, you want our money, but you don't want to say Christmas. I pray that every believer will, will uh, support uh, businesses that include Merry Christmas uh, in their Christmas decorations. And I pray that uh, if, the, the, if you're going into a place that's Christmas hostile, then they ought not to get your money. The Bible teaches that all things come from thee, O Lord, and from thine own, and of thine own have we given thee. Every dime you got in your pocket, God gave it to you. And you ought to be concerned about who gets God's money. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm fired up today and I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited about what's going to happen tonight because I'm going to tell you something, my friends. I got my Bible right here. I've read the, the last pages of the book and we win. Although there are times when it seems that we're not winning. You know, I'm going to talk about this. You know, Jesus Christ has been declared by some as being the original fake news. And uh, uh, there are these uh, power elites that say that God is dead. And when I heard that, I asked, well, when did he die? Uh, I just talked to him five minutes ago and we had a wonderful conversation. And then this morning he woke me up and woke me up on time, blessed me real good. Every time I call on him, he, <laughs> he speaks to me. As a matter of fact, I can feel him right now. So if he's dead, my question is, when did he die? But I want to say to all you crazy folk out there, you foolish people who declare God to be dead. I tell you what, uh, you'll never attend God's funeral, but he'll attend yours. You'll never, you'll never see God taken off in a casket uh, and put in the ground because God cannot die. 
Hallelujah. He is going to take care of the last enemy. The Bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Thank God. You know, we're going to uh, keep walking in uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives us the victory. Yes, they're declaring that God is dead. And you saw, if you were watching television the other day, the official Sodom and Gomorrahizing of America. As President Biden signed in the law, the destruction of, I mean, the Respect for Marriage Act, which is designed to destroy marriage. When you make marriage mean anything you want it to mean, then it, then it, then it begins to mean nothing. And uh, the president said something that uh, I really wish I could talk to him about. Uh, he said that um, while talking about marriage, he said it's, it's, Marriage is a simple proposition, said President Biden. Who do you love? And will you be loyal to that person, to the person you love? And he went on to say, it's no more complicated than that. Parents, grab your children. Parents, pay attention to your kids. Parents, pay attention to the trends. President Obama said the same thing, that people should be able to marry who they love, that we, that love is love. Notice these open ended statements about people being able to be with whomever. And there is, there was no uh, limits given in the speech, you know, no exceptions such as, you know, pedophilia, you know, grown people marrying children. I, all I'm saying is I'm telling you where all of this is headed. And the big lie that was told to us was uh, it, that it was for um, to protect uh, same-sex marriage. <laughs> and then, oh, I got, I got to get ready for tonight. Uh, interracial couples. <laughs> are, there any, are there any interracial couples out there who are having problems getting recognized as interracial couples. Now, that may be a black person who don't like seeing a black guy or a black woman with a white person. That may be a white uh, with a white husband or wife. That may be a white person who don't like seeing uh, a white man married to a, a black lady or so forth or so on, Hispanic, whatever. But I'm talking about the law. And, and uh, uh, if you if you paid attention to the president's speech, he had to go back quite a ways to find an example. That's because there is no one is threatening interracial marriages. Besides, if they tried to do that, they'd have to uh, 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 upset the uppercut uh, and mess up uh, most of the marriages of our black professional athletes. You know. The ones who walk in the trend that as soon as they make it big and, you know, love is love. I'm just saying, I'm just speaking to the trend here. As soon as they make it big, the next thing I know, they got a blonde on their arms or a brunette. And they don't seem to find the sisters to be as attractive anymore. I don't know what's up with that, you know. I, I don't see that trend with other people. And I do believe that it is that it is that a person should marry whom they desire to marry as long as that person is eligible of the proper age and of the opposite sex. Color and things like that uh, doesn't factor in. Now, I do believe that religion does. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Hey, ladies, I don't care how broad his shoulders is, how, how deep his pockets are, how green his green is. If he doesn't know Jesus and you do, hey, let him keep walking because you're not going to be happy with him. He's not going to do you right and vice versa. Uh, uh, she won't do you right, sir. So you need to, you need to, or your Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? So you need to marry somebody who believes like you believe. So I've said a mouthful to you there and uh, I don't know what people will make of it, but my point is the overall point, I don't want you to fail to see the forest for the trees 
is that no one is threatening interracial marriages. We have several interracial couples in our church, and I'm telling you, they seem to be happy to me. Uh, I love them. The congregation loves them. And uh, uh, we, we worship and praise the Lord together and praise God and move forward. And uh, uh, we're just, just fighting a good fight of faith. So uh, uh, the point is, what went on on the, on the White House lawn was the homosexualizing, the Sodom and Gomorrahizing, if that is a word, of America. And uh, they cloaked it with a, a few uh, red herrings to make you think that they're trying to protect uh, 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 interracial, interracial couples. And uh, when, when uh, 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 Justice Thomas uh, made his statements. He didn't mention interracial couples. Uh, he's he, he's in an interracial marriage. So, you know, that wasn't what he was saying. And nobody, they, they weren't trying to protect that because they didn't need protecting. Well, I'm running out of time, but I'm excited. I'm excited about tonight. Let me close by saying this. The reason I bring these things before you and mention these things and the hostility that we see at Christmas time you see the commercials where everything is season's greetings, holiday this, holiday that. They may play Christmas music. And uh, every now and again, when you're watching one of the local news shows, uh, they may slip up and say Christmas. What, what, what am I saying? All of this is, this is moving right along with what Jesus said would take place in the last days. That, uh, that the spirit of antichrist, anti-against, opposed to, in the place of, Christ would be in the world. That the antichrist is coming. And that is what we're seeing. All of this stuff is designed to oppose biblical Christianity. But God has given us a formula. God has given us a blueprint. God has given us a map, a way to fight back and to remain joyful, to walk in victory, to be the happiest and the most excited people in the world. Christians are not the ones who are walking around with a lemon face and looking like a prune and, oh, we're going, <laughs> while it's Christmas time, we're not the ones going around talking about humbug and we're, we're, I'm just not in the Christmas spirit. No, I am. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoyed saying to people, Merry Christmas. I was on a plane the other day and someone said, Happy Holidays to everyone. Season of Greetings. I said, Merry Christmas, ma'am. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, everyone else starts speaking up. Yes, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Then take me one person to, you know, to dare say it. <laughs> See that? I said it. Merry Christmas. Now that didn't kill you, did it? And you're not offended. And that may be someone watching this for the f first time and you awoke and well, I'm offended by it. You a liar. No, you're not. You weren't offended 10 years ago. You weren't offended five years ago. So when did it become an offense? It's the spirit of Antichrist. And it's coming after us in terms of what we believe in the workplace, in our homes. And I'm going to show you in the scripture how God has given us a remedy and the Lord is telling us to be excited and to stand our ground and we're going to see a move of God like we've never seen it before. And I'm going to talk about this tonight here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I want you to join me for... Bible study. Boy, I love doing that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Bible study. We're going to study the word of the Lord together and God's going to speak. And uh, for my friends who are watching, who are too far uh, to drive to church tonight, amen, tune in because God is going to speak to us and we're going to be armed with the scriptures. Now I've run a little long. I love you. So just so, so much to talk to you about now, my friends, you know, the world is, uh, the world is, <laughs> I want to say the world is going crazy, but the truth is we're moving right along 
everything is happening just as the Bible said. You know, if everything was cool, calm, collected, no commotions, no problems, oh, lawfulness everywhere, love everywhere, everybody being sweet, holy, and kind, and all that kind of stuff. One thing we, one thing for certain we would know that we're not in the last days, but it's just the way that Jesus Christ said it would be some 20, 22, 2,022 years ago. This book right here is being un, uh, revealed right before our eyes. Everything that Jesus said would be, that Jesus said would happen, that Paul predicted. That's how I know the Bible is. There's another way I know that the Bible is true. That Moses even talked about. Daniel said, that that is determined must be done. All of the things that this book said would take place before the coming of our Lord is taking place. Commotions of nations. When you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Talks about pestilence and disease and famine. All of the things that make the headlines. It says the power of the heavens will be shaken even with the climate and all of this. And you know, the new climate religion is, uh, is out there now. So don't get caught up in that. Stick with the real one and you'll be all right. So I'm not going to get started again, going down another road. Cause if I do, we'll still be going and going and going and going. I want you to join me tonight. Have a lot to say. God is speaking and I want you to hear it. See you tonight for Bible study. God bless.